What up guys, Sven here. Today we're going to take a look at what I consider to be the least forgiving unit in Prismata, Arcasadora. Even the simplest slip up in your strategy could immediately lose you a match where this unit is present, even if you are in an advantageous position beforehand. Being currently costed at 7 BBR and 7 damage, Arca is ridiculously cheap for the effect it produces by denying absorb from your opponent's defenders. However, it's being balanced by the fact that buying it immediately after your opponent is often better than being the first player to buy it. Let's say both players were in an identically symmetric position, both with 7 damage and the tech required to buy Arca and where Wall is the largest absorber. The first player to buy Arca denies 2 absorb from the Wall, whereas the second denies 6 absorb and they're left with 5 more defense on the table on their turn. So you'd often prefer to be buying Arca second and patiently waiting for your opponent to buy it first. This changes depending on how big the initial absorber is though because every extra absorb denied by the first Arca is less of the leftover defense advantage that the second Arca player will have. So with walls absorbing, the second Arca player is left with 5 more defense, but with infusion grid, they are left with 4 more. Now let's say your opponent isn't ready to immediately follow your Arca, and has 6 damage and a couple more drones or conduits instead. In this case, getting your Arca first becomes an instant game-winning move, since it absorbs 6 damage and you can attack with it afterward to avoid your opponent denying its absorb when they're ready to finally make their Arca. When they do inevitably buy their Arca, it only denies 2 absorb, so their Arca was basically as valuable as yours, but you got it earlier. This translates to a huge advantage with such an insanely efficient unit. So you want to always be able to set up an Arca in time for your opponent's first Arca setup. But there are some cases where it's okay not to respect it. Such as if your opponent goes for an Arca with 7 Pixies, or buying 7 Gauss Charges, or other similar units. One of Arca's important strengths is its ability to deny absorb the turn you buy it. But Pixies cannot possibly deny absorb as they will always kill one defense per pixie at some point in the game. This makes buying Arca with these kinds of units way more expensive than it should be. You can basically add the cost of these units to the cost of Arca, and with Gauss charges it would be a ridiculous cost like this. It's a lot better to get it with the permanent attack that you want to be buying in the set regardless. Getting Arca with 3 permanent damage and a Cluster Bolt can be very strong though, since Cluster is a lot more efficient than units like Pixie and Gauss Charge. Let's move on and jump into some ladder replays. Here we have a set with nothing too crazy going on. Just some decent defenders in Infusion Grid and Aegis, and a bunch of Absorb Denying units. My opponent chose to rush out some Tarsiers to get a quick Blood Rager, while I got a Tesla coil for a little bit later Blood Rager. One odd quality of Arca is that even though it's a huge absorber, it tends to push matches to lower economies than usual, because if one player starts rushing out damage, the other player has to immediately follow them and rush out damage as well, so that they can have the 7 damage in time to threaten the second Arca. However, if you're the first player to start buying damage, you need to consider whether you'll be on a high enough econ to spend 2 blue and 2 red per turn in the set. He chose to set up Arca as soon as he could get it, wasting 2 red this turn to buy the second Blast Forge. Assuming we can set up our own Arca in response, which we can in this situation, then this isn't a good move from him, because he's entirely committing to buying the first Arca now without waiting for me to buy it first. He not only wasted 2 red this turn, but if he doesn't buy Arca now then he's wasting even more resources, because he can't afford to spend the 2 blue and 2 red on 12 drones. Again, first Arca becomes better the larger the initial absorber is, but with infusion grid, 
the second Arca player is still left with 4 extra defense. So making big sacrifices to go for the first Arca in this situation doesn't make sense. For as long as both of us are hovering around 7 to 9 damage, it's correct for neither of us to buy the second Blastforge, because we can't spend the tech effectively if we don't want the Arca. There are some situations, usually in wall absorb sets, where it's correct for both players to never buy Arca, because neither player wants to get it first. Now he decides to attack with his Arca, which was a good call in this situation, since he had some defense sitting around from before, and he only had to buy a Rhino to defend. And that Rhino is unlikely to die, because it's actually incorrect for me to attack with my Arca. Arca can absorb for 6, but it's technically at the cost of its 4 damage. If we consider attack and absorb as equivalent resources, then the overall value of holding Arca for absorb in a vacuum is comparable to wall absorb. Attacking with Arca and absorbing on Infusion Grid instead will net you 4 attack and 3 absorb rather than just 6 absorb. And we can look at that as if it was the gain of a single attacker. However, the reason it's correct for me to hold my Arca for the rest of the game is because I would have to build 7 more defense to attack with it. And even if I could afford to do that, I wouldn't want to. 7 defense here would be something like 2 walls and an engineer, which costs 12 gold and 2 blue. If we compare this to the cost of an average and underwhelming attacker like Mahar Rectifier, then buying 7 defense to gain something equivalent to a single attacker and a gauss charge from Arca attacking, when you could be buying a 2 damage attacker for less, is terrible value. So basically it's way better for me to hold Arca and buy attackers, than it is to attack and buy 7 defense to absorb on infusion grid. As for the rest of this match, I just defend and keep holding on until my endo kit comes in for the victory. There are some situations where it's fine to get first Arca, whether or not your opponent is set up for it, even if it doesn't deny any absorb even. Take this situation for example. We both got giant economies because of the amazing defensive units in the set, and we're both ramping damage incredibly quickly with arms race, and blew right past the 7 damage. I buy Arca while not denying any absorb from his wall, because I see that he's already at a high enough damage number that he can't deny any absorb from my Arca with his Arca. So there's not really any downside to getting it first here. Compared to Doomed Wall as an absorber, Arca is an extra 3 absorb plus the 4 damage threat. And you also get the 7 extra total defense on the turn you buy it. If you total the cost of 7 defense and 3 extra absorb, and convert the resource cost to gold, it comes out something like 34 gold on average. Whereas the total cost of Arca when converted to gold is around 25 gold if you don't deny any absorb. And that's not even counting the damage threat. So it's still totally worth buying in this case. So we've looked at Arca with walls and infusion grids. But the best playstyle with Arca changes once you get to absorbers as large as energy matrix or larger. It's now totally fine if not great to be getting the first Arca to deny 4 absorb. Second Arca still gets a defense advantage of 3, but that quickly disappears because unlike in Fusion Grid, attacking with Arca and absorbing on matrix is good value. You're now losing 2 Absorb and gaining 4 Attackers, as well as something like 2 Gauss Charges from the promptness of attacking while losing 2 Absorb, which is well worth buying the 7 defense this turn, especially when there's not other great attackers to be buying instead. I can't definitively prove it, but based on the basic math and my experience playing, it usually seems to be pretty even between the first and second Arca against Energy Matrix. 
as it usually produces very close games, and the result usually seems to come down to other factors. Here's a situation where the first Arca happened to be exceptionally amazing. It's against Wall Absorb, so my opponent is getting a significant defense advantage. But this is a pretty standard play in sets with both Defense Grid and Arca. You don't want to be getting D-Grid first, otherwise your opponent would get too good of an Arca and your Arca would suck, because you can't absorb on it when you have D-Grid on the table. Because of that, I have to be getting Arca before D-Grid, and getting the first Arca allows me to get the first D-Grid, and attack with my Arca first, which destroys the defense advantage that my opponent has for the moment. However, because of the circumstances, Manticore clicks make it so that neither Arca gets absorb, and we're both going to be doing that on the turn we buy D-Grid. But I get to click all four Manticores to get 12 gold, half a turn before he does, making this situation all the better for me. With all the little advantages I gained from the Arca timings, and getting the Brooders before my opponent, the game is pretty much over at this point. Arca matches can get really complicated when you introduce the tech building sniping mechanic. And here's one with both Kinetic Driver and Apollo. When tech can be sniped, it obviously becomes very difficult to ever buy a tech heavy unit like Arca. Apollo's not gonna get bought in this set because 3 Blast Forges isn't good here. But with Dynamo providing green, there's no excuse to not be getting some kinetic drivers. I think he makes a pretty huge mistake here getting a gauss cannon rather than a kinetic driver. Since now I can seize the opportunity to get Arca before he can snipe my tech. He buys a blast in Animus and either hopes that I won't snipe his blast forge, or maybe just to force me to snipe it, since it's a little bit expensive to do so. But it'll always be correct for me to snipe it. The only way for him to get the second Arca would have been to buy a third Blast Forge this turn, which would severely overtech him. And I wouldn't have to get the first Arca anyway, since he still wouldn't have a Kinetic Driver. So I sniped his Blast Forge last turn, and now he has both a Blast Forge and an Animus on the table. And between the two, it's often better to snipe the Blast Forge regardless of what units they can buy with either tech. The reason is because the only way for him to guarantee himself an Arca purchase after sniping his Blast Forge would be to buy two Blast Forges and an Animus. But if I snipe his Animus then he would only have to buy a single Blast Forge and an Animus which can be a pretty significant difference if your opponent can only afford the latter. Although I'm spending a lot of resources sniping with the kinetics, the value I've been getting in the meantime with this early Arca pulls me very far ahead, and he taps out. That's it guys. Thank you all for watching, I hope that was informative for you, and thank you for all the support. The next one's going to be really exciting because it's Antima Comet.